So, uh, Nigel, uh, je- from a really practical sense, um, is there a universal good? I mean, when I'm with my friends and we're saying, you know, is, is that actually a good thing? Like, how does one in regular life decide if something is good or bad? I'm not sure that there are experts in ethics. Mm. I think everybody has to make up their own mind on the issue. But my view is that harming people, harming sentient beings is bad. Mm-hmm. Other things being equal, there are occasions when that's necessary for some greater end. But, you know, ultimately, ultimately it comes down to human experience, typically, and animal experience. Mm-hmm. If something definitely harms other people, then you should be thinking twice about it. That's the practical thing. But making right. the, the fine call on which things actually harm other people, it's pretty easy to see a career as a torturer isn't going to, on balance, produce greater good. You know, this is not the best way to live. Mm-hmm. But in practical decisions, should I work in the city? Should I be a teacher? Mm-hmm. Well, I'd say be a teacher. You know, if you really want to do good, if you want to live, live a good life. But there are other decisions which are much harder to make. Okay. Uh, is there any specific... I mean, because I think about it, uh, and I guess it's called a post, post-modernism, when, when it kind of... I find that, especially people in their 20s will be like, well, you know, that person has a different uh, opinion than I do, um, but that's okay um, because everyone's entitled to their opinion. Um, and, and, uh, and even though we say, you know, we're, we're not going to judge them for having a different point of view, often we would be judged ourselves if, um, if we said, you know what, that's a wrong opinion and I don't agree with that. So it's like you can only, you can only accept everything. You can't say, hey, that's, kinda, that's not right. I think you should distinguish between individuals making choices about their own lives. That's the position we're all in. Mm-hmm. We have to, if we're going to behave morally, right. we have to make the decisions for ourselves, not, them, not have them imposed upon us. Otherwise, that's just coercion. Okay. But that's not the same as relativism. Mm-hmm. Moral relativism is the idea that every position is relative to your circumstances. You know, there's no, there's no right or wrong. It's just what each individual, you know, in the, in the extreme case, would be moral subjectivism. Mm-hmm. What each individual believes is right for them just is right for them. And who am I to judge? Mm-hmm. Now, very few people consistently believe that, though they might say those words. Right. They might say, well, that's their opinion. It's nothing, you know, it's up to them. They've got choices to make for their lives, but they can make bad choices. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not true that most people believe that it's completely arbitrary whether somebody tortures little children or um, lives the life of helping other people. You know, they're they're not of equal value. It's just objectively true. They're not of equal value. Mm -hmm. And and those people will, if pressed, I think, get to a position where they're recognised. They're not saying that every possible way of living is equally valuable. But that doesn't mean we can't choose for ourselves. I mean, I think we have to choose for ourselves. There's no position where you can just not think about it. Because if you're not thinking about it and not making choices, you're not behaving morally anyway. Mm -hmm. You're like an automaton. You're a robot. And robots we don't typically yet think of as moral beings. To be moral involves deciding for yourself what to do. So, I mean, to clarify that in case it's confusing, I'm saying there's a difference between saying everything's relative and saying that um, everything should be a matter for individual decision-making because you can make the wrong choice. You can recognise yourself that, OK, I've done wrong things. I've, I, if you're um, a relativist, you say, well, whatever I do is right. Yeah. But it's obviously not true. I judge myself. I think I've done some terrible things that I shouldn't have done. Mm. I'm not going to elaborate on what they are. <laughs> but, you know... Can you some of those? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> this interview? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but there are things which I've done which... You know, I'd regret. regret. And if you don't have, you know, it's not just true that all choices are are of equal value. Some of those choices, it's only apparent afterwards that you've made a bad decision. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is. But for me, I'm I'm a consequentialist. I don't think things are absolutely right or wrong. It depends on what are the likely consequences of the actions. And you measure them by the, the, the likelihood of them causing pain and suffering to other people particularly, but also to other sentient beings like animals, particularly higher animals. Okay. I got one, one last question, and because um, you mentioned with, with being good, like perhaps being a teacher or something where you're actually constructively helping people become better. Um, I ask this question a lot, and, and I'm curious as to what your opinion on it is. Um, when 
you know, when, when your life is said and done and, and there's kind of that reflection when you look back or maybe a grandchild or someone looks back, um, what's kind of the, the main, in a nutshell, the main thing you want to be remembered for or maybe some of those teachings you as a teacher uh, gave? Like, what's that main main thing? Yeah. Um, you're assuming I want to be remembered, of course. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, because um, um, I, I, I think that's a strange way of living. Look, John Stuart Mill pointed out that one of the best ways of being happy yeah. is by being immersed in doing something else. As soon as you start reflecting on the kinds of things that will make you happy, huh. you lose the possibility of happiness. Um, I don't think we should be living constantly uh, with a view about what we, how we, we will be judged by the future. I think we should be immersed in the causes that matter to us in the present. But that's a cop-out. So, I mean, if I wanted to be remembered, I mean, I do a, a different things. I mean, um, on a professional level, I think I communicate in different ways through podcasts, through writing, right. through teaching face-to-face. -face. I hope that has some impact on people's lives. I'm sure it does. Um, but also as a father, you know, I want my, my children to have good memories of me. You know, as a, as a husband, I want my wife to be, you know, she outlives me. I want her to think <laughs> it was worth living with me. Um, they're all, you know, you're my friends. It matters to me that, that, you know, my friends feel I haven't harmed them. I haven't, you know, I've been a reasonable friend to them. Those things matter like anybody else. Yeah. I don't think that's a particularly I guess philosophical a position. Legacy, if, if that is an important thing for people once in a while to reflect on. Uh, I think it can be important sometimes to stay, take a step backwards and think, where is my life going? And some people don't have much opportunity for that. But it's still quite difficult because it's not that we've got a completely free choice. There are, there are all kinds of constraints on what anybody can do. <laughs> no, I